Hey everybody, welcome back to Amar City. Today's episode will be the first in a couple in which I'll be working on the airport and this is really an episode which I've been looking forward to for a super long time and I've also spent a lot of time just figuring out how I wanted to do everything and actually preparing this episode so I'm really happy to finally get this out there and be able to show off the beginnings of the airport. Um, it's still quite simple in this episode, I'm mostly chipping away at the general layouts of the airport and getting all of the public transport in. There's a little bit of detailing and a little bit of messing with uh, the, the road decals and things like that for additional detailing, which I haven't done so far, uh, but which is, a, especially lately, really changing the game. So I wanted to mess with that a little bit as well and experiment with making parking lots, but the focus is definitely on the airport. So without further ado, let's get into the time-lapse and see how this thing is built. Now before I went into the airport itself, I still had to figure out all of the roads that are leading to the airport and kind of calculate how far away from the rest of the city it's going to be. I built a, a quick test of the airport before I actually went in and recorded the final version right here. Uh, so I'm trying to measure up everything in such a way that it's actually completely true to what I did beforehand and um, there's going to be a bit of a, a, a sort of sunken highway for this section of road over here which sounds very unlike Amar City and I'll definitely talk a bit more about that when it gets its own episode at some point in the future which is most likely going to happen uh, but that's just going to provide a good entrance into the city that should hopefully be free of congestion and also be able to actually keep all of those cars out of the streets hopefully and um, it's also going to be pretty much the entryway into the airport as well. So we have the um, highway exits and the highway entrances going to the airport hooking up to this highway. And in fact, the entire airport itself will be sort of focused around uh, an athletics field shape road, which is kind of like a ring road of the airport going around here. And within that, I'll be placing all of the important buildings, parking lots of the airport. And just on the outside of that, we have the main terminal over here. And the main terminal is a sort of funky, simple design, just putting together a bunch of different terminals. I was messing with that for quite a bit, trying to figure out what I wanted to get, because many of the international terminals are quite large, and I wanted to have an airport with only one runway, which seemed like it was the most appropriate thing to do given the scale of this city. And uh, because of that, I also wanted to go for somewhat of a small terminal, but still one that has a very unique look. I didn't want to give like the city a terminal that's just fresh off the workshop and looks like anything else. So um, hopefully by putting together a few different very small terminals and assets and also some office blocks in the future, uh, we can actually have a very airport terminal looking building that's still quite unique while at the same time being small enough to be realistic for the city. Now about the runways, uh, or the only runway, and the taxiways that we have around here, I mostly wanted to work on the shaping of these, of these taxiways and put all of these small paths around them, mostly because I feel like the in-game taxiways and runways don't quite connect to each other as you would see in real life. Like in real life, they're much more curvy around the sides uh, like this, and they're also a bit wider. I do feel like the taxiways, and I haven't really measured this up so I'm not quite sure, uh, but they look to be quite a bit more narrow uh, than you'd see in real life so I wanted to make them a little bit more thick and smooth by putting all of the paths around them. And the reason that I chose to go for just one runway, which might seem a little bit weird, especially given how many of the airports that are being built in city skylines are really just experiments with different runways and um, making these large, awesome international airports. As much as I wanted to do something like that, it just wouldn't fit in the city. It's already quite a stretch to give the city uh, a runway. The basic idea behind it is that Amar City is an airport city, uh, which is very shortly put uh, just an idea of a city that heavily centers around an airport. The inspiration comes from Songdo IDB, which is in South Korea which is a very new uh, development in, um, well, I think it's in Incheon, but it's very close to an airport right there, and it's super new, and it's a very large experiment in city planning as well, which is close to an airport, and that's sort of a very defining feature for it, because that, that just makes you instantly very connected with the rest of the world. 
Uh, so if you're on that kind of service economy, it's just a great thing to have. And that's the idea that I had with Armour City as well. But the only issue is that Armour City is quite small. And I'm not sure if we're even going to reach the 100,000 cap by any margin. We're probably going to end up pretty low beneath that. Uh, so even though I wanted to have an airport for this city, especially given that otherwise it's just cut off from the rest of the world by a lone highway in Bahrain, because there isn't even any road service or a real road service in Bahrain. Um, I did want to have that airport, but it just had to be quite small to keep it realistic. And the main inspirations here were on sort of similar airports, even though they do serve larger cities uh, like London Airport or Rotterdam The Hague Airport. Uh, those two were the biggest inspirations. And there's also Maastricht Aachen Airport, which is another one of these funky one runway airports. And then another inspiration, which is obviously quite important, is Manama International Airport in Bahrain itself. So that just kind of gave me an idea of what the actual airport in Bahrain is designed like and what kind of markings they use on the runway, stuff like that. Uh, you might have noticed that I'm already doing the markings on the highway right here, but that's just sort of standard fare anyway. Um, but I already did some markings on the um, on the runway as well, and I wasn't quite sure about that. Like, this is one of the, the things where I would love to get feedback if that's possible, because I tried to look up, like, the different runway markings that I would have to get, but it seems as though uh, the Bahrain run runway markings are somewhat different. And um, basically, I've just copied the ones that Manama Airport has. And I'm not entirely sure if that's all correct, but yeah, that's what I did with the runway markings and detailing of the runway of the airport. So that's just what that is based off. And then when it comes to the highway, I just wanted to keep that, you know, simple, standard highway markings. I was actually quite happy with how these highways worked out. I think uh, when the straight uh, line prop tool just came out, like the same day, I tried out this design for highway exits and entrances, um, which is made by branching off a three-lane hi highway from a two-lane highway at 160 degrees and uh, just one square long, which is very narrow, but it's actually a very easy way to get that smooth transition into a slip lane pretty much instantly. So that's what I tried doing there instead of using Move It, and I'm quite happy with that. And the rest of those exits and entrances to the highway are really just putting down the right lines with um, the prop line tool. And that aside, it's all just quite simple. I didn't want to really overdo this too much. As you can see, a lot of the roadworks for the airport are quite simple. We just have this one sort of athletics track field shaped um, road around the ring. And then within that, we have all of the important services and one of them is going to be the bus station as well. There are going to be a couple of bus lines that I obviously want to hook up to this airport as well. And also on this side, in the middle of the big ring for the metro station, which is also going to be quite important, we have the long-term parking. And I realize that this might look like the smallest long-term parking you've ever seen. I also took some inspiration from London City Airport for this, uh, because there simply isn't much to do with a car in Amar City. There are some car roads and there are definitely some parking areas as well, but with the way that the city is designed, I'm trying to actively discourage car usage as much as I can. Uh, so I'm not expecting uh, too much cars coming into the airport from Amar City, especially when it's that close and when you've got a bus connection and a metro connection. Uh, so the parking is more or less also kind of a little bit to serve the rest of Bahrain. Um, because if this were real, the idea of Amar City is that it's somewhere in the south of Bahrain, on the east coast of it, and there's no airport around that area. So I do figure that, you know, if there realistically was one around here, and if Amar City would uh, be built in real life, uh, then it would kind of serve those areas as well. So there is still some parking, but I'm keeping it on quite a small uh, scale. Now on this side, we have the taxi lane as well. So we've got all of the, uh, like the taxi stops, I guess, where you can just wait for a taxi. And also there's gonna be some short-term parking around that area as well. 
But before I went into detailing that area, I wanted to go back to the long-term parking and detail that a little bit. Take a bit of a sidestep from the airport and start working on the parking areas. Now, I have to give massive credit to Strict Toaster over here for just being the complete inspiration from uh, for this uh, in Arrowhead Valley, uh, where he built this amazing parking lot. And that was pretty much what I intended to try over here as well. And it's my, my first sort of uh, take messing around with this as well, uh, but I'm really happy with it. Uh, you can actually notice uh, that I used the wrong asphalt texture here, because frankly we do have the ploppable asphalt mod, which is really amazing. Um, but at this point I actually didn't get that one to work, and I know in hindsight that it was because I didn't have Overwatch inst installed, so I have that now, so it is working in hindsight. Um, but at the time I was still using decals and that was a pretty big mistake, I had to go back and redo all of that, uh, but I spared you that in the video, so we're just gonna keep the asphalt for now like this. And the idea is just that we're filling in the entire space with asphalt and hooking that up to an actual road. And cars will actually be able to drive over these roads and go to these parking lots. Like, the parking lots are all parks, and uh, all the spaces between the parking lots are the concrete roads from network extensions. And pretty much over that we have all of the decals to get the asphalt in, and then some extra planters and decorations to make everything look quite neat. And we actually have some pretty good looking parking spots. And I'm just a huge fan of this uh, because it means that we can actually have asphalt parking lots instead of having it on the sidewalks as you usually see now. And uh, it works especially well if you've got like these large parking lots like these. Um, even though, you know, I am actively trying to not build these because this is Amar City and I'm not really an American styled uh, city with a lot of focuses on large parking lots as you would see around shopping malls, uh, areas like that in America. Um, but over here, it's actually really fun to build this and it's, I think it's a fitting addition to the airport and a good way to fill in this sort of oval space uh, that's in the middle of the, the sort of ring that we have going on for the metro. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. All of the decorations around it really do bring it to life though. That aside, it's just a huge field of asphalt. And to be very frank, uh, this is this is one of the things that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of trying to avoid with Amar City. I think these large stretches of asphalt in the middle of your city, uh, especially near downtowns, having these large parking spaces outdoors is something that's really ruining the entire life of a city. But, you know, in this case, it's right next to the airport and it's about the best way to get some long-term parking in. I may very well actually get some parking lots or parking garages a little bit further away from the airport as well as a second long-term parking because this is quite small and just in case I would like to have that as well but that's something that's going to have to be further away from the airport uh, because this is really as much space as I have sitting right in front of the terminal. Now, as for the detailing, a lot of this actually does come down to the decals again. Like, decals have just been game changers every, ever since the time that they came out. And the more that are coming out, the more you can also have, like, all of these different variations between them. Uh, but a lot of the detailing was also uh, some foliage. Now, back on the topic of decals, actually, what I also wanted to try here is actually get some of the lines in for these airplanes. It's just very basic right now, and I didn't even get all of the lines in. Um, but I did notice that the yellow lines that you get from the game itself are hardly noticeable and they don't actually like curve to follow the paths that planes should be taking uh, as they should be and the, the yellow lines just stop whenever there's a junction so I really wanted to place my own to make them a little bit more visible and also make sure that we do actually have some curved lines going on at the junctions and um, then there's just a couple more airfield assets over here and I figured it was time to finish up the ring road going back to the other side so that uh, cars coming in from the other side of the highway can actually hook up to the ring road and enter the airport as well. Now this road will also be used to kind of serve the industrial areas around the airport too. Uh, because we do have the terminal, of course. But aside from that, I also wanted to have some hangars, hangars. Anyway, those storage spaces for <laughs> airplanes as well. Um, and also a small distribution center. 
and of course also a fuel supply somewhere. Uh, so I definitely, of course, wanted to have uh, a sort of industrial lots alongside the airfield as well. So we have that going on there and some of the roads that are going to be branching off from this main ring road are going to service all of that industry which I am going to inevitably need. Um, but before I get into that, I wanted to make sure that I also decorated the area within the ring a little bit more and kind of built some offices alongside the highway because obviously you always have that kind of sort of uh, service development offices and such uh, being built around airfields or airports. I'm not sure why I keep saying airfield, but you, you do very often have that kind of stuff. And I figured, especially since this is really the entrance into the city, uh, coming from the rest of the country over the highway. I uh, could actually have some highway side office spaces around here. And with that, this should really hopefully be uh, shaping up to be a real airport district. Now, um, before I went on, I wanted to shape up the sort of artificial island uh, for the runway as well, because it is really jutting out into the sea uh, to make sure that it's close enough to the city. Uh, while at the same time, you know, not being pointed toward the city. And th there's a thing about this where I'm not entirely sure if it's correct, uh, because I, I have no idea what's north, south and east in the game. But the idea of Amar City is that it's in the southeast of Bahrain, on the coast right there. And um, the prevailing wind direction in Bahrain is also uh, toward the southeast. Uh, so by having the runway over here, um, you should usually be able to land uh, with less than uh, like 45 degrees difference in wind direction, which is I think what you need if you want to uh, land correctly. At least that's uh, one of the reasons why uh, airports always have many different runways going in different directions. Um, I know actually that's the reason why the airport in the Netherlands has the most stupid layout ever, which is highly unpractical, but has the runways going everywhere because the wind is very unpredictable in the Netherlands. But anyway, um, that's why the airport or the runway is moving into that direction. So hopefully with one runway, we should be usually more or less okay to land planes. Um, but also, I had to make sure that the runway was long enough uh, so that actually, actually the planes that I needed to land in this uh, airport can actually land in there because the, the in-game runway uh, is st stupidly short. By the way, I'm just building some office buildings in the background right here because I just wanted to finish that around the highway. But yeah, the, the in-game runway is super short and um, as far as all the research that I kind of did on this topic, the the minimum runway that a Boeing 737-800 needs is 2,070 meters, which equals 260 squares in-game. And that was the maximum sort of length that I wanted to go for for the runway, like just enough so that uh, Boeing 737s can land over here, which works uh, because that is a sort of medium range international airplane. And it's also an airplane with a lot of assets on the workshop. So I can actually realistically do that. And a lot of the bigger airplanes like 747s, all of the jumbo jets pretty much um, need huge runways of like up to three kilometers and more. So there was no way that I was going to be featuring any any kind of runway like that. It also would absolutely dwarf the city, like this this runway being two kilometers is already showing just how small this city actually is. But yeah, I went for the length of just over 2000 uh, meters for this runway so that we can land Boeing 737s in here. I think there's also the Bombardier uh, CRJ700, uh, which I think has workshop models as well. Uh, but that has a minimum runway of way less than 2000 and it's more of a regional plane. So basically uh, what all of this means is that we have a somewhat small runway in the city but it's good enough to land some international planes and we can also have some regional traffic. So this can actually be, albeit a small one, this can actually be an international hub and also be another hub within Bahrain like if you wanted to go from the north side of the country, which is the, the part of the country which is very heavily populated and where the big cities are. If you want to go from there to Amar City, you could practically do that with the airports. And, um, you know, this is just a handy thing to have if you have that kind of service economy and you've got like business people, uh, stuff like that, who want to get to other places very quickly. You should be like at the airports in, in Amar City 
in under 15 minutes from wherever you are in the city and that's just a pretty handy thing to have economically. So yeah, while we have that going on, I wanted to go back and do a lot of the detailing around the highway. It's not nearly enough time to actually get all of it done since I wanted to mess quite a bit with foliage and decals, but one of the things which I already kind of chipped away at there is the roadworks uh, by putting in some decorations around parking lots and roundabouts to make that all a little bit more fancy. And I also wanted to experiment a little bit with uh, some of the decals. Now these are some of the, the newest decals and um, what I really like about these is these are the theme decals and a uh, massive uh, thanks to Roni X69 by the way for making this mod because it's it's amazing and it's super helpful. But the great thing about it is that these decals, in my case, given the theme, are very subtle. Like, the differences between them aren't too stark. And what I found with a lot of the earlier, like, standard sort of ground texture decals is that they're all meant for different uh, biomes than what Amar City is made in. Like, a lot of the decals that you'll find around, a lot of the assets in the game in general are just built for uh, sort of northern European... Uh, or North American European kind of climates and don't really work too well with the lights, bright sand textures that I have going on. But the theme uh, decals actually work really well and they sort of give that very subtle difference in sand textures and uh, like some, some small parts with pebbles. Like basically it gives you some different textures to look at. It makes uh, the ground look a bit more believable, realistic and interesting to look at without making it very busy on the eye and a mess of all kinds of different textures. So I was really happy to mess around with those different uh, theme decals and put some very simple foliage on top of that to preserve the very desert look while at the same time making it not too boring to look at. Now on the other side of the road I wanted to get to the short-term parking right here and also the taxi stands and also a little bit of the detailing of the industrial area around here. We've got like a small little park path going between the industrial area and the terminal in here, uh, which is not too necessary or too good looking, but something that I just figured I could put in between those. And um, a lot of the detailing around the parking lots is just making it look like a believable parking lot. So getting some of these lights in between there, some planters to spruce it all up a little bit, and uh, some interesting decals as well for the paths by King Lino. A massive thanks to him as well, like I don't think I can shout him out enough, uh, especially for making the villas at Armour City, which is an amazing asset, but in general, you know, a series like this wouldn't be possible without the, the mod creators and the asset creators. But anyway, um, I can do that for hours. Um, I just wanted to put some simple trees in there to shut it off a little bit from the highway and then move into the final part of it which is going to run in front of the terminal and right in front of the terminal kind of symmetrically I did want to have a very small more park side section so you do at least have that nice little uh, separate section I guess before the terminal so at least it's a little bit fancy. I was first considering kind of making a bit of a, a small boulevard in front of the terminal entrance but you know this is this is the Bahrain climate there's no need for anything like that like it just wouldn't really work it's not something where you'd want to sit anyway so um, the way that this is uh, designed is just to be a, a pretty pleasant kind of parking lot area that isn't just an empty field of tarmac uh, but it's actually quite nice to look at. But that aside, it's not really any kind of place where you'd really purposely want to stay, so it's it's pretty much built like that as well. And I also wanted to put all of the decals in for that same reason, because we do have that large, sort of boring concrete look going for it otherwise, which is not something that I'm a huge fan of. So all of these different um, stone path decals at least help make this entire build look a little bit more interesting than that. And I wanted to border that by adding this other decal, which is a little bit darker. And at first I was not too sure if I should actually use these decals, because they really are a lot darker than the decals which I've been using so far. Uh, but they do actually work quite well together. So I just kind of put that around it to give it a bit of a border, but also give it an area where it just looks perfectly for all of the planters that I'm going to be putting there in the future. Now here I derped out because I didn't really have any decals to make a, a crossing with. 
So I'm pretty much procrastinating on that until I find uh, until I find something good that I can make that crossing with. But until that day, it's just empty for the time being, which hopefully isn't too bad. And um, I'm fencing it all off with a simple glass fence and putting a bit of decoration over here to at least make it look like a little bit of a park and also get that sort of symmetrical interaction with the building itself in as well. And hopefully, and this is pretty important in this climate as well, uh, provide some shade. So you can at least somewhat walk in the shade uh, while you're going to the terminal from whatever short term or uh, taxi stand uh, you're coming from. This is something that I do want to consider quite a lot uh, because the amount of foliage that I place in the city is definitely not as sustainable as much as I like to proclaim that the city is sustainable. But I think it's just way too crucial to have some foliage in the city for shade reasons partly, but also just because it makes it look better and because they filter the air. It's just too important to have these trees around to not have them just for the sole reason that, you know, it would be slightly better considering water costs. Besides, something interesting that I still want to try is to try and put some permaculture out there in the desert and try to get some more foliage back in there. Because interestingly, Bahrain isn't a complete barren wasteland. Uh, it definitely does have some foliage, especially around the west coast, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just really historically relied quite a lot on freshwater reserves that are underground. And those have been just generally filling up with more salt in recent years, and that's a huge issue. But that aside, it would actually be a really interesting project to see how you could actually fill the desert with more foliage and sort of reforest it in a similar way that many projects are trying to around the area. But that's something for a later day. For now, a lot of the foliage around here is to just make this area come to life a little bit more and also hopefully hold onto the sand a little bit because obviously I do want to maintain the idea that uh, this is some more slightly more coarse sand that's actually being held down by some foliage and not just flying around and whipping us whipping up storms all the time because that's definitely not something I want to have either. This grass by the way is super weird in a sense that it kept floating so I had to like drag it down with move it all the time and also it's literally floating in a sense that it kind of moves as if it's on the water and in real time you don't really see it too much in fact it actually kind of looks as if the the grass is waving a little bit in the wind uh, but actually that's the the primal reason why it's it's floating because it's this is like a large open stretch of land and the game thinks that the trees so that makes them wave because this is a very windy area but anyway uh, it kind of looks as if it's windy in real time, but in the time lapse, it's definitely a little bit ridiculous. But yeah, there's not much I can do about that because yeah, uh, in-game mechanics, if you've got like a large open stretch of land and there's going to be a lot of wind, the game thinks that your grass are trees and it's just going to move those trees as if they're trees, but it's actually grass. So that's kind of something that's a little bit annoying. Anyway, here I wanted to start work a little bit on the industrial complex on the left side of the airport. Definitely not enough time to finish this entire thing because this uh, this episode is already becoming very long and that is including some parts that I left out of the time lapse and including a lot of like preparation that I left out as well. It just takes a while to get all of this done in the way that I'm hoping to. Uh, but yeah, at least I can get some of these industrial complexes in here and get a very good start on the airport and get a pretty good idea of what this is going to look like eventually. I hope to finish this, by the way, in the next episode, at least. I hope to finish the airport itself in the next episode. The direct area around here is most definitely not going to be finished. And the same kind of goes for the highway. I kind of want to have a separate highway episode as well. Uh, but for now, I'm quite happy with the progress that I do have in this episode. I really just wanted to, to wrap it up over here. Uh, because this gives a good idea of what the general layout of the episode is or of the airport is going to be and how I'll be detailing some of these points as well. And so in the next episode, we'll be getting into some further detailing, actually getting some planes in the airports, actually putting all sorts of stuff around that, giving the industrial areas some detail and a grittier look to it. And also doing a bit of basic detailing around the highway, basically making sure that this entire 
area is finished because right now it's very much done in terms of overall layouts and the general idea that I wanted to get to, but it just still needs that flair of detail here and there. But yeah, that's basically it for this episode. So thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.